Have you ever felt like this ship lost at sea in a fog with no clear way forward? 23 years ago, this sweet guy was born, and 24 hours after he was born, I found out he had Down syndrome. After the initial waves of emotions came over me and I began to accept my situation, I just knew that I wanted to do everything possible for this guy to have the best life that he could. However, I was a lot like that ship lost at sea with a no map and no clear way forward. At that time, we were living in a developing country that had very few resources, and the internet was not what we know it to be today. Along the way, we took some risks, we tried some things, some things worked, some things didn't work. And here he is today, he works, he plays sports, he volunteers, and as I look back, I realize I was using design thinking to navigate a confusing situation or to help myself learn. And that's what I want to share with you today. Now, I know a lot of us are using different design thinking models in our classroom. Uh, here's one of them, the Stanford D School model, and it's, it goes like this, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. So it occurred to me that we can actually use design thinking to help ourselves grow professionally and personally. So I kind of came up with my own design thinking cycle, and it is called the design cycle for growth. It goes like this. Be vulnerable, identify a problem, find community, take action, and get feedback. So let me take you through a time more recently when I used this for my own growth. After 15 years and raising four children, I came back into the classroom. Um, there, instead of overhead projectors, there were smart boards. Instead of textbooks, there were one-to-one -one computers, and I didn't even know how to design a PowerPoint. I showed up at my first Hanoi Tech meeting and just sat there. I felt clueless, and I whispered to the person next to me, I'm new in the classroom, and I have no idea what I'm doing here. And she just smiled at me and said, that's OK. And so here's how the growth cycle worked for me. The first step was recognizing that feeling of vulnerability, that feeling um, that I didn't know anything about technology, and that was pretty humbling to admit. I recognized and admitted that I had a problem. I whispered to somebody, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know anything about these new technologies. I began to connect to a community. I kept showing up at the Hanoi Tech meetings and began attending conferences like this one. I got on Twitter to connect with other educators outside of my context. And then I just started taking action with the things I was learning. I helped to teach a coding ASA. I tried to implement Genius Hour in my classroom. And I just began to let my students experiment with different digital tools. It wasn't always pretty. In fact, it looked a little chaotic at times. I also enrolled in an online certificate program called Coattail. And we had to begin blogging about the things that we were learning. And every time I hit publish, I thought, oh, man, what are people going to think? Amidst the constructive criticism, there were always really great suggestions for ways that I can prove, improve the things that I was trying in my classroom. Now, I noticed that it's not always that simple. Life is complicated. Sometimes the wind is blowing against us, or maybe our anchor can get stuck somewhere. I've noticed that there are some common barriers that might kind of trip us up along the way. We might find ourselves stuck on the first step. A barrier to vulnerability is being stuck in our comfort zone. Being too comfortable or thinking that we have it all together, uh, it's hard to recognize that unsettled feeling inside of us telling us that it's time for a change. Sometimes we're not able to identify our problems. Growth happens when we can identify the problems that are keeping us from achieving our purpose. And um, our purpose is kind of the why behind everything that we do. So in my case, my why was that I wanted my students to have more opportunities for connected and deeper learning. So if what we are doing is connected to a compelling why, then it will be easier to identify the problems. 
We also need authentic community to learn. So if you find yourself stuck with trying to build community, you might want to ask yourself, how diverse are your connections? We can actually learn a lot when we interact with other people who think differently than we do. Uh, get to know other teachers outside of your school and see what they're doing. Get connected with teachers in your school. They're probably trying things that you've never tried before. A barrier to action can be a lack of focus and accountability. That's why I joined Coattail. Up until then, I was kind of just randomly Googling different things that I wanted to learn, and it was just unorganized and unfocused. But once I joined a cohort, all of a sudden there was some accountability to what I was trying in my classroom. Feedback. This is a hard one. We want it, but we cringe when we get it. We genuinely need to want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly from people that we trust and respect. In the 50s, a self-awareness tool called the Jahari Window was developed. And in the top left box is the self-awareness box. This is the stuff that you know about yourself and that other people also know about, yourself, about you. And so the big idea is that in order to grow, we need to increase our self-awareness. And the best way to do that is by minimizing the other three boxes, especially our blind spot box. So your blind spot, those are the things that are on your back that you don't see but other people see, and the best way to uh, minimize that is to invite feedback. It's not always comfortable or easy. In fact, most people, unless they're your mother, don't feel comfortable giving it. You're going to need to ask for it. So invite teachers to come into your room, ask other teachers to observe you, seek their honest and specific feedback, and expect it to be uncomfortable but helpful. And so now I'm looking ahead. Next year, I'll be stepping out of the classroom and joining a team of people who are um, going to open up a training center, vocational training center for young adults with intellectual disabilities. And sometimes I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm pretty sure that it's what I'm called to do. And so now it's time to design my growth. I'm going to need to risk vulnerability and just take those first steps to respond. Knowing my purpose and my why will keep me going when we face different problems. And I'm going to need to connect with a community of families and other businesses who share a passion for what we're doing. I'll need to take some action. I'll need to enroll in a program to give me some training and community development. And along the way, I'm going to need feedback from people that I trust and respect to improve the things that we're trying. And I imagine this cycle will continue over and over as we uh, go through this process. So what about you? As I've talked today, is there something that you would like to grow in either professionally or personally? When you find yourself in a fog, um, you can, instead of just muddling your way through your situation or making excuses, you can use design thinking for your own growth. Thank you.